Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pack and Preschool. And tonight we are talking all about an apple theme in your classroom and like ideas for literacy, math, STEM, blocks, sensory, all the things. So why don't you tell me in the comments, tell me if you are doing an Apple thing, if you've done it already this year, um, if you wait and do it in October, um, let us know. That way we kind of know what you're doing in your classroom too, because it's always fun to know what you guys are doing um, and get you guys kind of talking to each other during these videos too. So also at the top of this post is something awesome. It is a counting stew apple pie freebie for you, so make sure you grab that after we are done. And there's links to my TPT store and my blog that has tons and tons of more Apple ideas on it. Um, so yeah, so what I do is I'm gonna flip the camera around, walk you around my classroom and show you all the Apple things that we are doing or just some things I've done in the past or ideas I have. And don't think there's any way that I ever fit any of this into my, <laughs> in, into my lesson plans. I never fit all of it in. Um, and I kind of pick and choose based on the kiddos I have that year and what they need um, and what skills they need to work on. So I'm going to flip it around. I see a lot of people are either doing it right now or they're doing it next week. Super, super fun. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to flip it around and show you all the things. Ready? So first things first, let's talk about um, Apple counters. So there are so many different things you could use um, for apple counters. So you can use pom-poms. These are some new stackable counters I got over the summer. They're from Amazon. They're linked in my Amazon store if you wanna grab them. They come in a whole bunch of colors. I just pulled out all the red, yellow, and blue, but they do stack. So they're really fun for counting. Um, but yeah, so you can use pom-poms, little stackable counters. You can also use cubes if you have counting cubes. Um, glass gems. I know the Dollar Tree has green almost all the time and they have red sometimes. Um, I actually grabbed these maybe like a month ago or no, sorry, last year around this time. Um, but yeah, so grab the red and the green for a little apples. Um, if you have any mini erasers, these are from a kindergarten crate, but I know Target and Amazon have them too. So basically whatever you have in your classroom, just use that and it will work. Your kiddos won't know um, the difference. And just grab what you have and what's, um, what is the cheapest and what is in your budget. Um, and then just some other fun things you can do um, with just stuff you have around the classroom or from the dollar store. So I love using muffin tins and these are just silicone baking cups from Amazon. Again, they're linked in my um, Amazon storefront, which is the top of this post if you wanna grab it. But I just um, put some green, red, and yellow in. And I know we always think about sorting by color, but I actually don't do letter of the week. And people always ask me, how do you not, how do you teach letters without using letter of the week? So instead of sorting the pom-poms by color, like grab just a bucket of letter manipulatives, dump them out on a tray, and they can grab the letter, so they would say M, and then put it in the red cup. And you don't have to get out just the colors that are in your um, in your tray because they, if they're sorting, they won't put those in. So they can sort letters or if you have numbers, you can also take out the silicone cups. And again, this little muffin tray is from the Dollar Tree. Um, you can take out the little silicone baking cups and since they're magnetic, you can put a number in the bottom or a letter and they can put that many in the baking cup. And then you won't ha you don't need a principal or anything for this activity. Um, grab, you know, six or eight, whatever fits a table and it's a really fun um, morning activity for you guys to do. Um, you can always also, you know, any little baskets you have. I got these around Easter time. Um, I wanna say those are from the Target Dollar Spot. But anything with the dice, just roll a dice and they can count out that many um, manipulatives and put them in their basket. Things can be super simple and if you wanna add a fine motor, just grab some tweezers and they can pick up using tweezers. Oh, these foam dice are from a kindergarten crate that I got um, in the mail. 
Another fun thing to do with things from the Dollar Tree are plates. You guys know I love using paper plates. Um, I just taped a pipe cleaner on the back, so now it's like a little apple. You can put numbers on them. Oops, sorry about the glare. You can put numbers on the little plates and just line them up. Um, and you can do this on the floor or on the table. And they just literally count out that many apple counters or apple manipulatives and put them on. Or you can make apple letter plates. Again, I just taped this on the back and they can sort your letter manipulatives. And if you don't have these, when I do an activity like this, I usually pull out three or four different um, letter manipulatives. So I might pull these out. These are actually, I use these all the time um, and for a lot of sensory too. They're actually beads, but we don't really use them as beads very much. Um, but they're awesome because they're colorful and they're little um, and they're awesome. And they don't, you can put them in like water and they won't rust because they don't have magnets on the back. But if we're doing the apple plate letters, and let's say I only put out like 10 letters or something, um, I might put out a basket of these, a basket of magnet letters, and maybe some like giant letter beads, and they can sort the letters um, that way. But that way they're not just all over one bucket. It's just easier for them to manage and share if they have more letter manipulatives to pick from. And it gives them a little bit of a choice when they are, um, when they're um, sorting. Oh, and on this plate one too, you can also put out, of course I can't find the number three. You can also put out number, um, magnet numbers and they can sort the numeral dominoes you could put out with this or um, again, count out the corresponding number of counters. Um, Kelly, those the these letter beats are linked in my Amazon storefront, but I will drop you the link after um, we're done, after I'm done going live. So in my TBT store, I have a um, Apple Centers Math and Literacy Pack. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the activities I have in there. So these are apple tree, like an apple tree letter match. Sorry, let me adjust my camera really quick. Um, they come with uppercase, lowercase, and sounds. So you pick what works for your kiddos and what they need. So maybe you're just doing uppercase. Maybe you're only putting out 10 letters. Maybe you're in kinder and you you um, want to put out uppercase, lowercase, and sounds, but maybe just for 10 letters. Um, do what's manageable for you. You can also make these into a file folder game just by gluing them to the inside of a file, file folder. Um, and then with those apples, you can also use them for a sensory tray, a sensory writing tray. This is just a plate with like a nice little lip on it. And this is that dried oats. And you just shake to erase. And then they pick an apple. And I'm writing with my wrong hand. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, and then they make the letter. And these are cinnamon sticks. You can get like a giant pack of them from Walmart and they will last you forever. Makes your room smell great. Um, but it um, gets them writing without worksheets using their senses. And again, this is how I teach letters. Um, I don't use letter of the week. I just am constantly doing all of these fun letter activities. You can totally teach without letter of the week. It's okay, guys. Um, you can also have them build their name with, again, with these same letters. So you're cutting out one set of letters, but using them for all kinds of different activities. You can even have them match the letter and the sound, um, match uppercase with lowercase. You can also have them make letters. These are some little tracers I have. These are just black beans, but you can tell them they are apple seeds. And they can make the letter or, again, use a dry erase. This is a, a pie syllable game. So you would start, and I actually use this. A lot of my syllable games I introduce as a transition. So I'll put all the pieces on the ground and then I'll just put these in front of me. And as the kiddos, I call them one at a time, they pick a piece of the pie and they clap the syllables or we clap it together depending on the level. And they would be like lemon and they would put it on the two, and then look, it makes a little pie, because they've just got Velcro dots on the back. Um, so yeah, so that's a lot of times how I introduce my syllable games. I just do it as a transition, maybe two or three days, and um, that way everybody plays it, and I know they know how to play it, and then it sneaks in some more learning. So for journals, um, 
we, again, so the first half of the year we just use, and I'll do a Facebook Live on journals. Um, I just use these composition notebooks, but we don't actually write in them, as you can see. We just kind of focus on making different kinds of lines. This one we did tape. Um, so one day I put apples on the side, which I just used dot markers. Dot markers are great for journals. It gives them a starting point. You can pretend they're balloons or apples or balls, whatever. Um, and then, here, I'm, this is my journal underneath. And then I modeled and I said, let's make our apple bounce, like bump, bump, bump. And then this is what one of my pre-K kiddos did. And you can tell, you know, some of them were curvy, some of them she got pointy, but you know what? We're just practicing making those different kinds of lines. Um, and then later in the year, we'll actually move to writing. But this is more of like a fine motor journal, but we just, it's really quick, like 10 minutes, and we just make it really fun. Another day, she of course did it in yellow, <laughs> you can barely see, but we just pra practiced making circles. So I said, we're gonna make apples, and I gave everybody a marker, and I said, we're gonna go around, 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 stop, and then you can make a little brown stem. Line down, and again, it's really a great time to talk about how you start at the top and you go down. Um, so yeah, so just some really fun, quick, easy ways to get them writing, making different kinds of, well, not writing, just making all those different um, kinds of lines. And these, I just use these regular, normal bingo daubers, I think the dot a day ones, yeah. They dry really quick. Um, they're dry by the time we're done. So they're great for journals. Okay. Let me show you guys the freebie I have for you tonight. So I had totally planned on doing an Apple blog post for you guys and putting this in as the freebie, but life and back to school has been crazy for me. So <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you tonight. Hopefully I'll get that blog post done within the next like week or two. Um, but I know you guys need it now, so I'm gonna link it. It's at the top of this post. Um, so yeah, so be looking for the blog post to come out. But if you need it this week or next week, you can just print it now. So I'm gonna flip it around and show you how to play. If you're new to Counting Sues, basically you just grab a sorting tray. They have them at Lakeshore or um, the Dollar Tree. And then what you get is you get a set of cards. These are the, um, the freebie again. It's at the top of this post. Um, and basically they're counting out the number of items and they put them in a pan or a pot or a bucket depending on the theme of the counting stew. And they mix it up, sing a song, and then they put it back. So they're counting, they're identifying numbers, and then they're sorting or matching when they're putting everything back in. Um, there's cards that go from one to five. There's cards that go up to nine. And then can, there's also blank cards. So you can either write them in or maybe you need cards that are just one to three um, for some littler guys, or maybe you need to do dots, or maybe you wanna do some bigger numbers, it's up to you. Um, or maybe you wanna have put out dry erase markers and have the kids write it. It's totally up to you what you guys wanna do. Um, so yeah, so I'll show you how to play it. So we'll pretend like I picked this card, and for the apple pie stew, you can use these little tiny apple pie pans. Um, I found mine at Marshall's, and then I just cut a piece of brown felt to make my dough and I'm gonna use this or you can just use these little pans. These you can either get on Amazon, Walmart has them right now in the toy section and they're, I wanna say like 10 bucks for a set of like three or four or something. They're in like the dramatic play, like cheap Walmart toy section of the toys. <laughs> um, and this is just a little piece of tablecloth just to make it extra fun. So I would pick out one red apple, one, three lattice strips, one, two, three, and then five yellow apples. One, two, three, four, five. And they can pretend to eat it. Nom, 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 nom. And they can sing the song. I'm not gonna sing it, but if you wanna sing it, it is to the tune of Purple Stew. Um, you can look it up on YouTube. I'm a horrible singer, as you guys all know. Um, so yeah, and then they sort it back. So as you can see, they're sorting by color and they sort it back. So there's whipped cream, yellow apples, green apples, red apples, lattice, um, which is just, I just cut up some brown felt, super simple. And then cinnamon sticks. I actually did um, break these in half. Um, so yeah, so super fun, super simple. It's a really, really fun counting game 
there's, I, oh my gosh, so many counting shoes. Like, there's three different bundle, mini bundles, and there's a giant bundle with a whole bunch in there. So, kind of like the counting or the letter match apple trees, I also made a number one. And again, it's just showing the number represented in different ways. So, we have a, a, the numeral, a counting hand, and a 10 frame. And you can put out numbers just one through five which is what I have right now, just in the bucket. And then I just would have this on my math shelf. And that's enough for my kiddos now. I don't want it to be overwhelming. You could put out more. I want to say it goes up to 20. Um, we have some more Play-Doh math mats. This is an apple count. So they would pick the card, put that many in the 10 frame, and put that many in the tree. So one, two, three, four, five six, seven, and you can use counters if you are bold and you want them to work on fine motor, throw out some Play-Doh, totally up to you. You can have them draw, whatever you want. Um, I try and make my center packs open-ended so they kind of work for you and your kiddos. This one's just an apple pie count. They roll the dice, put it, um, count out that many, and put them on. Or you can use the apple 10 frame cards, up to you. We also have apple patterns, so they can either um, copy the pattern, so put the pom-poms directly on it, extend it, because this is blank, or they can make up their own apple pattern. And if you're talking about apples, um, I actually brought in a tray, I actually used this in my classroom this week, it's just a tray of different apple foods. Um, a lot of them, actually if you go to the dollar store, like I find this freeze-dried apples at the dollar store, we actually, I let everybody try some today. Um, and the other stuff I just honestly grabbed from my cabinet. As you can see, my <laughs> candies are open because I've been eating them. This is from the Kinder Crate, too. They're delicious. Um, if you want to make apple pie in a cup, it's really fun, fine motor snack, even if they don't eat it. It's fun to expose them to different things. Um, all you need is a can of apple pie filling, whipped cream, graham cracker in a baggie, and cinnamon. All they do is they smash, 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 smash the graham cracker. Again, great fine motor. Look at all this pincer grasp um, I'm doing. Um, and obviously, like if they pound it, it's not really gonna break. They actually have to smash it in with their fingers. And then, give everybody a cup. They put in the graham cracker crust. They put the apples, put some whipped cream on top, and then sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon either in the apples or um, on top of the whipped cream. So, so yummy. Um, so yeah, but you can definitely do a fun little apple pie in a cup. And if you need more directions than this, you can just go on Pinterest um, and find that out. And I just have a big thing of apples. Um, you can ask every parent to bring in an apple. Um, but I did, we just have a whole bunch of apples that we've been examining and looking at and balancing um, on our heads, all the fun things. Let me grab something really quick, and I want to show you what we did this morning for table time. It was super fun. If you follow me on Instagram, I did a story on it. So I took a giant piece of butcher paper, put it on the table, and I just made with a bingo dabber that had India ink in it, um, which I'll show you that in a minute. But I just drew a tree. That one says yellow. You can barely see it. Um, and then I have a red tree and a green tree. And then I put out all of my manipulatives, so they had to sort these. And at the very bottom, which I think they used them all, but they, I had just dot stickers cut out so there was one a piece. You can see here's my trash bucket. And that way they could pick. They could pick out if they wanted to do the pom-poms, they could sort the pom-poms. They wanted to sort all the things, they could sort all the things. But that way they were sorting, they were up and moving. Because um, we talk about sometimes how for table time, they are walking around the table doing the activity or it's a sit down activity. So all the chairs were pushed in and they were up walking around, um, talking to their friends, checking each other's work, sorting the apples. So this is um, my favorite thing. I want to say Cassie Stevens. I learned this from her. So these are bingo, da bingo dabbers from Amazon um, and it's called India Ink. It's just black ink on the inside. It is permanent, so I wouldn't use it. Have your kids use it. I use it for butcher paper activities. Um, 
it's fun to like write their first letter in their name and do crafts with it but it's literally just ink and it has a bingo dabber top i want to i don't know if i can get it off with one hand so let me see if i can and it dries i don't know what i'm making but <laughs> and it dries really quick um so yeah so you can do it in the morning really when you get to school and you are good to go um this would be great to do you know, if, if you're doing number dot, it's on butcher paper, any um, thing on like cardstock or whatever. It's awesome. All right. And then this is my library center. So we have all the Apple books on our bookshelf. I'll tell you, I usually tell you guys a couple of my favorites. Um, 10 Red Apples by Pat Hutchins. Love this book. Amazing. It's a great counting book. Um, just I think it's my favorite apple book tap the magic apple tree um, it's an awesome book I love this one it's about seasons too um, it has a bare tree and then if you tap it the leaves grow and it's basically like the life cycle of a apple tree so that one is really fun too and I have an apple book list on my blog so that's linked at the top here is my writing table you can tell they have been busy um, at the writing table this this week um, so I have apple paper apple word cards and I have uppercase lowercase around the table um, that way because I have a multi-age classroom of three four and five year olds so that way my three-year-olds can trace if they want to copy they don't have to if they want to copy these apple words they can on paper they can or if they want to use lowercase they can um, I put in some bingo doppers since they look like um, apples and then I just threw in some apple stickers and um, little dot stickers. My trick for stickers, I have found that if you put out a whole sheet, they will use the whole sheet. But if you kind of cut it into strips or smaller little sections, they won't, they'll use like one section and then they'll kind of be done. Um, so yeah, so that's my trick for stickers. And if they use all of them, it's fine. Like I usually just buy a lot of my stickers at Michael's um, in that like dollar sticker section they have. And then we have Apple Hide and Seek, or sorry, Letter Hide and Seek. I had two little guys playing this today, it was hilarious. They were going like over there um, behind the drying rack to hide their eyes while the other one hit it. So they, basically they have to hide the worm behind a letter and then the other friend hides their eyes, they hide the worm, and then they have to come back and find it. So they will. Pull, pull the different letters. Is it under A? No. Is it under D? No. And this is another game that um, since it's beginning of the year, we hadn't played this one yet. Um, so I introduced it by doing it as a transition. Just call it a kiddo. Pick up, pick a letter. Oh, is it under F? Nope. Okay. And I put that one on the ground and then call the next kiddo. So it's a great transition activity. Um, kind of for the end of circle. And this is where my writing trays are. Let me show you all the art goodness we have going on here. So we did some Apple Still Life this year. Um, I'm really loving Sharpies and watercolor lately. This year and last year I've been loving it. You can also use oil pastel if you don't trust your kids with Sharpies. Um, but I, they, we talked again about how apples are circles. So they all drew circle apples with a stem. Um, and I modeled just how to draw a circle first. And then they use liquid watercolor to paint the apples or the stems. So you can tell this is a pre-K. This is a three-year-old. So you can tell she didn't do the stems. But that's totally fine. Totally fine with me. Um, this is, so this is my, these are my liquid watercolors. I have them in a dollar store muffin tin. Oh my gosh, I forgot who, I got this idea off Instagram. I will link his Instagram when we're done because I forgot. Um, but he uses these little silicone banking cups and puts the lids on them because they will evaporate, the water will, um, if you don't keep lids on them. And that way you can kind of just like stack these wherever. Um, and then I put the colored paper underneath because I had brushes out. So if they use the red brush, they would just put the red brush on the red paper when they were done. Um, but yeah, so you can just take off the lid use it and then put it back and then I just took out the colors we weren't using so yes so somebody's asking if I sent any of their artwork home and I 
a little bit, but most of it goes in their portfolio. So you can see I had it um, hanging up there where the hole is. Um, so yeah, so most of it goes in their portfolio, some of it goes home. Um, I kind of do a mix of both. Our Play-Doh tray for this time is we made apple cinnamon Play-Doh. I um, During center time, if they wanted to, they could help me make Play-Doh. So we mixed it all together and then um, I cooked it on the stove because my stove is in my classroom so I can still see them. Put in some little mini apple erasers. These are from Kindergarten Crate. Um, beads, beans. <laughs> so they like could have pretend to make an apple and have apple seeds. Cinnamon sticks. And then I ran out, I couldn't, and I couldn't find any more mini apple trays, so I just put in some little bread plans, um, apple cookie cutters, and then just some little Play-Doh tools. These I got from, I don't know where, um, this little mini roller is from Walmart. And then tomorrow, or Friday, we are going to do apple printing, and my, I, at least with me, I, when I put apple printing out with real apples, I find they're hard to pick up and the kiddos don't play with them or pick them for art a lot. So I just grab these cylinder blocks and they're literally just stamping them. And I, I'm, I'm using these little, I'm trying this out this year, so I don't know if it's going to work, but that way um, maybe I'll save paint. That way at night I can just put a lid on this and then if it doesn't get gross, I can keep it for another unit just little cups of paint because it's easier for them to manage so yeah and then they put the little stems on top with the marker um I don't know where I got somebody's asking where I got the apple cookie cutters I don't know because I find I literally look for for cookie cutters like everywhere I go um we're also going to do apples up on top class book and I just sometimes I make our class books different sizes so I just cut some paper in half I made mine already, <laughs> um, but I'm, all I do is print out their picture, and then they get to stamp however many apples, and then I'm going to have one of my pre-K kiddos make our cover. Um, I'll have them probably stamp apples and put, like, apples on top or something, because you don't always need a cute, cutie patootie printable. So this is my art shelf. So if you came in, if you were a kiddo in my classroom, this is what it would look like. On this top shelf right here, oh, sorry, let me give you a whole scope. Shoo doo 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 so there's the whole art center. So during free choice centers, I always have the Play-Doh tray of, for each theme right here. And then I usually have, if we have a themed um, art experience or art whatever, <laughs> um, art activity, it's right here on a tray. So like if they wanted to do this apple rolling, which I forgot to cover these, um, I usually just covered these bowls with um, saran wrap. So We've been using them all week, and they worked great. Um, so what they do is they'll just take this tray, and they put it on the table, and the box is behind me. Um, but then they, it's basically marble rolling, both apples. Um, and if you don't want to use real apples, use fake apples. But um, here's how they turned out. So they put the apples, they roll them around in here, and then they put them in the box, and they shake, 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 shake. Yeah, and then they can just put it back when they're done. And then they are good to go. And that way, if they want to do something else in art, they totally can. But that way, they know where the um, theme, the new activity of, like, because I put out one um, activity each week for Open Toy Centers, um, and it's usually right there. Um, this is what we did last week. So, I mean, is it really an apple theme if you don't do an apple plate um, craft? And so I know a lot of people say, oh, it's a craft. And I actually use this as a fine motor activity and not art. Because if everybody looks the same, it's not really art, right? So I use small paper plates because a big paper plate for a three-year-old, and shoot, even a pre-K kiddo can be overwhelming. So what they did is they had to tear the paper. So that was my fine motor um, like art piece. I wanted to teach them how to tear paper. Um, so I had tore up strips already, and all they had to do was tear across. But believe it or not, that is very tricky, especially if they have never torn paper on purpose. <laughs> I'm sure they all have on accident. Um, but yeah, so they just tore the strips, and then they had to glue it on, and we had to practice using our glue sticks again. And then when they were done, I just taped on a stem and a leaf. And then I hung those up. 
in another place in the classroom, but I just wanted to do to see these. So if um, that's just what it looks like in the, if it's on the shelf. Let me show you the easel. So at the easel, I have apple color paint. Um, so we have red, green, yellow, and brown. And then these are actually from my science pack. Um, my All About Apple science pack, I just put them at the easel so that way if it, want, if it inspired them to draw, or paint, sorry, paint some apples or um, an apple tree. I've only had one so far paint an apple, but um, I just wanted to show you that one. So it's right there. Yeah. Because it's, it's, if you, um, a lot of times they just kind of like paint, right, like this, which is awesome. Um, but sometimes if you put just a little inspiration at the easel, and it could be a photograph, it could be a picture of real art, just make sure you laminate it because will, it will get paint on it. Um, it could be, you know, like a real artist painting. Um, put that at your easel and try and inspire your little artist. And if you want this art easel routine, um, Go ahead and grab that. It's in my TBT store and it's a freebie. But I want to show you, I still want to show you science and sensory blocks and I have the Apple Orchard Dramatic Play. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here is our sensory bin. So I have just the, what is this? Like dried oats or oatmeal from Walmart. Um, and I do keep it and reuse it. I did put a little bit of cinnamon in it just to give it that smell. And I know some kids are allergic to cinnamon, so just check your allergy sheet before you use all the cinnamon stuff. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. And then I just put some of these little, what are these, like berry baskets, um, some measuring cups from the dollar store, apples, which are really just pom-poms, real cinnamon sticks. These are those like plastic shot, plastic shot glasses, but we just call them tiny cups. <laughs> Um, and so, and some different mixing tools and some little pie pans. Um, and basically they just come over here and it's just free. They play this during um, free choice play and it's awesome. And if, yes it does, get all over the ground if you're wondering. Um, so I have little dust pans and then I have these squares. I have two of them this year because the, the oatmeal is flying out of the table like crazy. Um, so what they do is they sweep it in this little square and then then they that's when they get out the dustpan part because otherwise they kind of like don't have a purpose and don't they just make a bigger mess because they're just kind of like sweeping obnoxiously so if they have a visual place on where to sweep it to um and obviously i'm helping them at the beginning of the year middle of the year towards the end they usually do it um independently and i just use washi tape as you can tell it comes off and i just put it back down so no worries there here is my discovery center which is math and science um, I have on the table this um, little, um, it's a shape matching game. They pick the shape and they pick, cover the card with, or cover the apple with the mini counter. So they're just doing 2D shapes. And I do have a, there we go, I do have a simpler board that just has not as many shapes for my, because I have three, four, and five year olds. So this is usually, I'll have my three year old will use this one and my five-year-olds will use this one. And if my my little guys, if they wanna use that big board with all those shapes, they totally, totally can. Um, I know this one you guys see a lot of people doing right now. It's the make the apple tree with the um, paper towels. Please don't use toilet paper because they're dirty and gross. <laughs> um, but I actually cut them different sizes so that way they're exploring um, a little bit. They're doing a little bit more science so they're exploring um, just the strength and the, how the height affects the balance of their tree. And I just grabbed some different sticks. And then I put the little pattern blocks out because they can be like leaves with the mini erasers. And if you're wondering what to do with your mini erasers, use them for STEM. They're so fun. And if you're wondering where I got those all those sticks from, I have right here, they're kind of our STEM drawers. So it's basically all of our building stuff that is small, that they need to use on a table. They're not all full yet because it's the beginning of the year, but there's Legos. And then this one has popsicle sticks. So you can tell all I did was grab um, all the green ones out and just put it on the tray. And then this is our science center. So they are exploring apples. This is all from 
my All About Apple Science Pack. So we have like the life cycle, we have different vocabulary cards, they can weigh them. Um, I usually put these away, but since we had a Facebook, since I've been doing a Facebook Live tonight, I don't. But I usually just put these in the fridge um, after school, and I usually, I can usually use one for like a day or two. But it's usually, I also use it after we've maybe used it for um, a science experiment. So I don't have an open apple out all the time. Um, and then apple seeds, but they tend to get lost. <laughs> And then we did our apple investigation one day during circle. So we looked at the outside. And I gave, actually, when we did this, I gave everybody an apple. Um, and we looked at the outside together. And then we cut. And we measured it. And then um, we measured the teacher one. I called it the teacher apple. So we measured our teacher apple. And then we looked and looked, cut open the teacher apple, which was just a red one. And we looked at the inside, and I let everybody touch it. And they talked about how, how it looked, how, you know, we talked about how the white on the inside is the flesh, and the red on the outside is the skin, and there's the core. And then we counted how many seeds. All right. Oh, and then I want to tell you a trick about anchor charts. So this is an anchor chart I actually made for my apple science centers pack when I was um, photographing it but what I did was I laminate all the pieces so all I'm gonna because we're gonna do this on Friday so all I'm gonna do is take off all these pieces and then I can make a new board but I already have these done so that way you're not wasting paper and ink you can just throw the like this part away and then you can use this again because I mean if you're doing an apple unit, you gotta do a taste test, right? And with the different kinds. And you can also, um, they can also vote or you can graph which, which kind of apple is their favorite. Here is our block center. So this side is mostly like the cars and the construction-y stuff, like the paint and the signs. And then, I'm trying not to make your eyes dizzy. Over here, my top shelf typically changes out for the theme. And then I have parts of my fall um, stem I can build cards to inspire them to hopefully build new things so they're not just building the same thing over and over and over. And they are just on a um, on a ribbon. So that way if they want me to get, if they want to take this down or if they want me to take it down, they can. And they can look at it closely. Um, but we have, for our apple theme, we have tree blocks, which these are from Discount School Supply. The mini oval baskets are Dollar Tree. I love these things. I have stacks of them. We have hay bales, which are a block with covered in yellow paper. Um, little apples. These are actually from Michael's. I thought they were kind of expensive. I want to say they were like five bucks for the little. They were more than this because I have some in dramatic play. But I just used my coupon and I went twice to get them. Um, so yeah, this is just part of a tablecloth. Um, and then I have some little tractors. These are actually my own kiddos tractors that I took <laughs> from our house <laughs> or from upstairs since my preschool is in my house. So yes, yeah, so if you don't have tractors, you can always to ask parents to see if they will donate something for your theme for the block center. Say, if, do you guys have any tractors at home you would like to donate for two weeks? Um, just um, if you have a class that's a little crazy, just put, um, you know, if it gets broken, will it be okay? So, yeah. All right, so now, drum roll, please. Here is our, try and back it up so you can see it, our Apple Orchard Dramatic Play. This one has been so fun. This is new. I just made this one this year. Um, so this is the first year I've done an Apple Orchard in the Dramatic Play Center. Um, so what I did was, you guys know I love to make the backdrops because it just, it bring, I feel like it brings your dramatic play center to life. I, <laughs> you want to see a teacher fail right here? I'll show you. So I cut my butcher paper too short. <laughs> so I had to put another little piece. Hee hee hee. Because I didn't want to waste all that paper. But I cut it too short. But it was fine. I just put another little piece. So I just put butcher paper on the back. And then since it's the beginning of the year, I outlined the trees and then they painted in the inside. Um, and then I put Velcro dots on and these are just pom-poms. So they can pick the apples off of the tree. Um, I know some teachers 
are saying like this is the red tree and the yellow tree and the green tree so they have to sort by color um but i have a new little friend that just started this week so we are just getting her acquainted to the room so we just have just well, whatever color wherever right now um and when they are picking this apple off look at this great fine motor friends so when they have to push it on they can't just like put it on like all willy-nilly it'll fall down so they have to actually push and again using that fine motor strength so we kind of have two sides to our apple orchard so this side's kind of like the market and I didn't have a lot of apple props, so I made them. And you guys know my secret. If you watch me, I just put paint on the inside of jars to make it look real. So we have apple cider, apple butter, and see how it looks like apple butter? I mix gold and brown together. Um, I, my friend come over, comes over um, like once every other week, and she helps me cut and laminate, and she helped me set up dramatic play and she had the fabulous idea of putting some gold in the apple butter to make it kind of sparkle like apple butter and then applesauce and these are, again are all plastic I want to say I got these I want to say there were sand in these from like the Target dollar spot or something I know they have them at Dollar, dollar Tree too but if you can like find whenever they come in something else I try and keep that stuff that way I can reuse them and these are just stems um, I just like fake flowers from the Dollar Tree. I just cut up and I know everyone loved last year the flower shop um, Or was it the year before? I can't remember. Um, I think it was the year before but, um, but I have them sorting by color and I actually added that this week um, We didn't have these the flowers out last week, but um, so they can sort by yellow orange and red There is a purple label, but they didn't have any purple at my dollar store and then we also have sunflowers, but if that's too much, and if you think this is too much for your kids, you can always dial it back and put out less. Um, these little cake stands I found on clearance at the dollar spot. That one, you know when they have dollar spot clearance? And then these are the rest of the apples I found at Michael's. So they had big ones, and then these are the rest. I bought a little, a little bag of red, a little bag of green, but they didn't have yellow, so I had to spray paint some of the green ones yellow. That's why they're really, really shiny. <laughs> but you do what you gotta do, right? And then this is just a like plastic tablecloth I put on there to make it pretty. And then on this side is the snack shop. So this is just the Melissa and Doug stand. I, I took off the awning because I feel like I can't see behind it. Um, so I just take that off a lot of times. And then we have like a snack menu. So that way they're reading and ordering um, off the pictures because remember reading pictures is reading um, and that way they can order. So that you can tell this little friend ordered almost all the food. <laughs> she got kettle corn and donut, caramel apple, applesauce, um, and a drink. So she ordered everything on the menu. And then here are our props. This um, is a popcorn or kettle corn machine. And um, if you get my dramatic place that all of this comes, all the printables come with it, plus ideas on how to make everything, because you can tell this is just a box. I painted black. These are little squares the kids cut, and then they crumble up. Um, these are just some donuts. Um, these are just felt circles that I put paint on. These applesauce cups, again, inside is painted with the applesauce lid Velcroed on. Cut of corn bags small medium and large because i had a friend today she was putting these cups back and it was like this and i was like oh, do you notice that they're different sizes because this one doesn't fit on the inside the other one and she was like oh my goodness and so she was funny she um was over here switching these cups around trying um some of my labels are i just put a little piece of tape on the bottom of them so sometimes they get wiggly towards the end of our theme um, so she was moving them around trying and she was like looking at them trying to match the sizes So it was a really fun way for her to explore Size, but if I wouldn't have put different size cups in there She wouldn't have had that math experience during play So try and put in things that are different sizes and if you have kiddos that are little and it you think dramatic play is overwhelming or it gets super messy Just put in small and large. You don't have to have the medium size. Um, just do small and large or maybe you could do colors, put different colors out. 
These are our spices for our coffee. Caramel apples, again, just felt, or you can dip it in paint. Um, all right, this is my favorite part, you guys. Oh, the drink machine. So this is the pie. So what you do is I have, again, small and large pies. So I actually had to buy some pies from Walmart. Like, I think they were 50 cents to get some more small pie beans. Um, but I'm gonna make, I'll make a, a little one. So then they have to get some dough, and I just cut some brown felt. So like that one is too big. So now they're comparing by size. I think I actually cut this to match the, the other pie pan I have, but that's okay. And then they have to get the filling. So if they use the big filling, that would be too big. So they have to get out the little apples because it's a little pie. And they would use tweezers, but I'm not just for um, Facebook Live purposes. <laughs> and then I have lattice, but some of it is too big. So they have to go through and find, sorry, the smaller pieces. And they can bake it in the oven. And in my dramatic play kit, I also have the sequence to make a pie. And again, these are just cut up on Velcro. If this looks too much for your kiddos, just put the ones on there you want them to use, and that's totally fine. Um, so that way it, it can simplify it. And if your dramatic play center, you notice, is becoming a hot mess, um, don't put as many of these out. So maybe you just have red and blue out. Or maybe you have red, maybe you have blueberry, lemon, and apple. Maybe you don't have the other ones. So if you notice dramatic play is getting to be a mess and it's just really hard for them to clean up, just take stuff out. So take out the medium cups, take out some of the, um, the coffee spices, take out some of the pie filling. It's not everything, um, but just take some of it out so that way they can kind of learn how to use the props and that way it's manageable for them and not overwhelming. I, since somebody was talking about storage, I do want to show you one thing. So all of my um, math and literacy centers, I put in these iris storage containers. These are from Michaels. Um, it's over here because I a lot of it I had to pull out. And then I put a couple manipulatives in the corner. That way I remember what manipulatives I have um, and I remember to pull them out. So that way, you know, I remember how I have I use beans and mini erasers and the gems. Um, this, these are the other I spy letters in lowercase. Um, I put my unit in page protectors just because that's what works for me. And all the printables are on the back because all of these actually do have worksheets with them, but I don't use them. Oh, there's another activity that's in there. Um, so there's all the activities. And then you can see um, I, I guess the rest of that apple tree game and extra stickers and so if there's any other art projects I'll put like I'll make one and then I keep mine in there or if a kid makes two or something um, I'll keep an extra one in there so I remember the next year um, and I, I'll just put like samples of everything so I can just pull this out and put it in and I will even put in so I have one for all of the math and literacy centers and then I have one that's just um, it's just for science um, so yes, yeah, so I have my science centers in one, and then I have all my math and literacy centers and fine motor, and my put my STEM cards in there for um, each theme. So yeah, okay. So I'm gonna be really daring, really quick. Okay, so my office is a mess, so don't judge, don't judge. <laughs> oh, it's not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna flip it around and I'll show you um, all my themes. So hold on. So on top of my shelves, again, don't judge my mess. <laughs> um, I have all of my themes. I'll link my organization post um, because these labels are free um, and they're editable. But these are all of my different themes that I have. And I literally, if you look, I have everything in there. So these are like, this is like my Christmas. I have cut up straws. Christmas actually has two. Um, but I have sand, like if I have sand for a, a sand tray that's special, um, sometimes I even put candy in there if I use it for stem. That way it's harder and they won't eat it. Um, like if I have cookie cutters in there, um, again, a little manipulatives, washi tape. Um, you can tell these are the manipulatives I use for my fairy tale theme. So again, to help me remember 
because I don't know about you, but I have so many manipulatives now. It's hard for me to remember <laughs> what I have. And then usually I put my dramatic play inside of here. Like so for my apple orchard, I'll put it inside my apple theme. Um, but I like post office. I, um, I can use that for a couple different themes. So I just put it in a folder and then these are all the printables and just a little protector. And then these are all my pictures so that way it's much easier when I go set it up. And every dramatic play theme I have, I have a like copy paper size box of that. So yeah, so that is the Apple theme. I hope, I hope you got lots of ideas. So all of my dramatic play, each one, I just have the cover on the box, and those are all my dramatic play. So yeah, and then I, on the next shelf over, I have any like big dramatic play, play props. Like that's where I'll put the kettle corn machine and the science, or the science, <laughs> the soda machine, just kind of go on that shelf, um, either next to it or, or under all those boxes. So I hope that helped you, um, and I will also link the um, organization post, so, and I actually go through everything, and I even open up like my kitchen cabinets. Um, so yeah. All right, well you guys have a good night, and I will talk to you soon.